We are live. Hello, hello, hello. I think we're live. It says we're live. I think so. Hey, I'm, it says we're live. I think we're live. Hello, hello. Hi. We'll give you guys a minute. If you can see us, let us know. That's yes. Always, yes. The so comment is always good. So I'm on window there. Am I showing you guys? There you go. Yeah. Okay. I'm almost all over. There we go. Yes, that's better. It didn't actually move though, did it? I wonder if the light. Oh, oh. where are we? I, I moved my thumb. Sorry, we're still there. <laughs> Renee! Hello! Hi, Hi Renee! <sighs> How's Ohio today, Renee? Is it hot? Great. I can see and hear you. Hey, yay. Terrific. Woo. Hello from the Wooly Thistle. Who's <laughs> in there is the Wooly Thistle. And is the Wooly Thistle Renee or Caitlin? Because <laughs> it's not me or you. So. Yeah. I had a body experience. Yes, yes. no wool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Bernadette. Hi, Thank Bernadette. you for joining us. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Caitlin. Uh, <laughs> We're just giving uh, everyone some time to come in. Yeah, we should say hi to Caitlin too. Hi, Caitlin. I said hello to Caitlin. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but hello again, Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin, is the Indiana State Fair going on yet? Because I feel like it's about that time. Hi, Mab Mabel. Hello, Mabel. It says um, we're getting a notice about our Too low. settings. Please set. I don't, I don't know what that means. Oh, so we just minimize it. <laughs> no? Mm, too low. Learn more, maybe? Oh, God. <laughs> no. What's your resolution? It's, it's something to do with your resolution. I don't know. We're having some technical issues, potentially. Where do we go? There we are. Okay. Can everybody see and hear us okay? We're getting some warning, <coughs> uh, warning, warnings. Well, hello to Mabel Kirk and Susie. Susie. And Bernadette, hello, hello. Little Rock, Arkansas, that is not cool. I think you're going to be temperature quite warm. Temperature-wise. Temperature-wise <laughs> is what I meant. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. We're happy you're here, too. You work on Friday, so couldn't join in the past. Yeah, and it's Monday today. All right. Who's feeling like it's Monday? Oh, yeah. I'm having a Monday. It's quite a Monday. Yeah. Um, uh, why don't we get started, though, since um, some of you have showed up. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, we are here today for an AMA, which is an Ask Us Anything. We do have some questions printed out. Yep. Um, they, the, some of you uh, submitted questions before now, which is great. But if you have questions, okay. put them in the comments. Yep. Um, start at the top. You want to just start at the top and work our way down? Sure. Um, April asked, I appreciated the Victory Cardigan Steaking lesson, but would love to view a tutorial for steaking sleeves and a neck. Is that something we could see in the future? Yes, definitely. And in fact, it's a funny thing that you asked. I didn't know this, but I just finished I, I just finished the uh Fortrose vest and it has steaks in the arms and the neck and I recorded me cutting them I assume you mean cutting them mm -hmm. or but yes yeah, so yes um and I think that's actually going to be dropped into the next episode of the shopcast so if you're watching that you'll see me cutting here and here so um, do you talk at all about setting up for steaks, or do you just show the cutting? No, the I think I do. I, I always blather. So I yeah. think I do talk about that. And I know we talked about it in the Shopcast this morning that we recorded for Friday. Okay. Um, and if there's more, you know, we could, we could definitely look into doing more of that, if that's something. Because I'm sure I'll be steaking again. I feel like that could soon. be a service you could offer, is send us your things that need to be, like that first cut. Yeah. make the first cut and then you can take it from there yeah because i feel like a lot of people are afraid to make that first that very that first, first snip. cut believe no. me it's anticlimactic for sure <laughs> i mean it's you're filled you're filled with relief but it's like oh that's 
not so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I took a class on it years ago. Me too. And yeah, and you know, you made that first, and you're like, you like, that was it. Yeah, like because, that was. <laughs> and you know, I, I think too, as soon as you realize that it doesn't um, run sideways, your stitches don't run that way. They, they're going to stay put. Yeah. You're like, oh. That was yeah. The the instructor was talking about you know that was back in the days of, of wearing stockings like pantyhose and things. Yeah. She's like, you never get to run sideways. It's always just straight That's up and right. down. That's exactly you know? right. She's like, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah. So. But it is a big deal when you've never done it before and you've spent hours knitting. So I get that too. Yeah. yeah. Hope that answers your question. Um. Okay. Uh, Karen asked. Wondering if you would ever consider leading a tour of Very Excited Thistler to <laughs> Shetland Wool Week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd consider it, but actually, <laughs> I should tell you that I think I'm going to be traveling next year with Batten Kill Fibers on their uh, trip to Scotland. It doesn't include Shetland, but it's uh, all over Scotland, so that might be something that interests you. I'm hoping to be on that trip. Yeah. And so it's not a Shetland Wool Week. It's not a Shetland Wool Week thing. Um, I've never made it to Shetland Wool Week myself, uh, just because my kids were younger. And September, August, September is always really, you know, mm -hmm. all about them getting back into the routine of school. They're older now, though. Um, but yeah, what about you, Maggie? Um, that's one of my bucket list mm -hmm. things. Uh, so if we ever did one here at the shop, you'd have trouble keeping me away from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we'd definitely be going. How about you? Um, I have not been. I would like to go. Mm -hmm. In fact, I follow Shetland Wool Week on uh, Facebook, and I've had to like do a 30-day mute of them because my feed <laughs> is full of all the people talking about going, and I'm just like, hmm. FOMO, FOMO. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Renee is going, and I think Renee's here today in the comments, so she's going, um, and I can't wait to hear all about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe one day. But check out Batten Kill and see if that interests you too. They do lots of trips. They're doing one to Norway, and they just got back from the Canadian Maritimes, so they're they're fun to travel with. Wonderful. Um, Jenny asked. She says more of a request than a question. Would it be possible to offer all the Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight wools? Um, that would be so very appreciated because then I wouldn't have to go to other shops for all my color choices. Thank you. Color choices? Well, we yes. have all the colors in Jameson and Smith 2 ply, so you should be able to get them here unless they're out of stock and we're just waiting for our order to come in. Um, and we do stock a fair number of their yarns. I don't think there's much we don't stock. Maybe some of their lace weight. Yeah, so I... I, I think that was part of my, I had a question about Jenny's question, um, because the two-ply jumper weight, um, the fingering jumper weight, we have all the colors. Yeah. Um, so we may occasionally run out of stock, but yeah. we do regularly reorder um, yes, to try we, to avoid that. Yeah, we intend to have all of them. Are there um, a hun 102 colors? Something like that. Yeah, and we do now um, have We have for a colors. long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I almost wondered, are you also thinking about Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift because um, there are some color they have a very wide selection there are even more um, and we don't yet have all of those so um, yeah and that that's oftentimes just harder to get the colors mm -hmm. as well so we do our best yeah yeah um, but otherwise yes you can find all of the colors of JNS two ply in the shop yep. um, at any given time absolutely mm -hmm. Um, one question that's up on the screen I want to get to oh, before yeah. it rolls away yeah. is how do you keep the moths away from the yarn? Oh, <laughs> thank you for that question. So you can use things like cedar chips, Isn't cedar Roma sure? packets, yeah. um, lavender sachets. Um, they don't like that either. We, we have these cedar Roma packets here. Um, they're very inexpensive. And I think, let's see. Uh, turn any place you store clothes into a cedar chest with these. Yeah. Yeah, they recommend that you, like, take a nail or something or push Poke pin holes. and just put holes in it, and then you put it in. Yeah. Like, all of my yarn at home is stored in, in bins, for, for better or worse. I don't... There are some skeins that are out that I, if I'm thinking that I want to work with them, but otherwise they're in the bins to try to keep critters out. Um, and then I just have a couple of those where you put... You just punch the holes in it, and then you stick it in the bin. Um, and I have I have a away. chest, a wooden chest. It's not a cedar chest, um, but it's lidded, and I keep all my finished knits in there. 
Um, and I do have cedar, I have some cedar blocks and some of that and um, lavender sachets. So whenever I've got family here and they're coming, you know, we go out and do touristy stuff, there's always lavender sachets and things that you can buy. So that's mm -hmm. what I, that's how I spend my money is buying up little things like that. And mm -hmm. then I throw them in with my yarn. How about you? Um, I actually, so I have uh, cedar aroma packets in my dresser drawer where I keep my knits. Um, but since we've moved, I now have my grandmother's cedar chest nice. and my mom's cedar chest and mine. Um, I'm wondering if my grandma's and my mom's, if they're old enough, you know, I kind of wonder if I need to rough up the inside a little bit to uh, you know, like expose, the some, yeah, yeah. expose some, some Cedary? fresh wood again. Yeah. That so, might be um, a good idea. But yeah, so oh, I that's have some lovely. old, old cedar chest. That's so, nice. So that's yeah, nice. that'll be my storage now. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and I think just moving your yarn around, you know, if it's not kept in bins, um, moths like it when, you know, they're undisturbed. So, you know, going through your stash once in a while is not a bad idea. Going through your knits, washing them at least once a year, uh, laying them out to sun dry mm -hmm. is always good. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the thing that moths really like, and I think we have a blog post about this. Um, yeah. But the things moths like are your dead skin, so it's kind of gross. But, but every winter but, or every spring, um, when I'm done wearing the knits, I do a big batch. I hand wash everything, and it gets cleaned before we're getting um, refolded and tucked away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Do we have any other questions here? There's lots we of do, comments. We do. Oh, there we go. Jenny is here. Yeah. Yes, we could certainly add. So Jenny's just saying suggestion to add right on our website that we stock all of the Jameson and Smith two ply. That's a good idea. Um, and yes, wondered <laughs> about Jameson's of Jameson's spin drift too. I can't talk today. Yeah. Um, when um, you are looking for those colors on our website, though, we do have to split them up into two groups now because we do have too many. Not too many. We have just the right amount. But <laughs> but they're now. Um, but too many for the system to yes. be on one page. So now yeah. they're split into JNS colors and JNS neutrals. Mm -hmm. That is a great so, point. And so. neutrals are, you know, the the creams, the browns, the navy blues, yeah. black, those kind of colors. And yeah. they should be linked to each other. So if you're on the colorful page, you can link over yeah. to the you can, neutrals. You can, and yeah, you can get back and forth. But if you don't see a color that you're looking for on the one, on the go to the page. other one. Yeah. they're all there and then if you're still stuck we do have a chat bubble on our website yep. um, and you can always send us a message through the chat or through email and we can help you find what you're looking for yeah but don't do it right now because i'm on here and not <laughs> <Yeah>. on the <laughs> chat <laughs> that's true that's true um oh look at i think caitlin put the blog post about moths up yeah. thank you caitlin. Oh, great. thank you yeah um there was a question um i didn't see who asked it about um, Pamela's asking any chance we would consider stocking comb tops, uh, especially John Arbin for spinners. Yeah. Um, we have had this in we the past have. where we've brought them in. Um, and I, I'd be willing to consider it again, but we'd have to look at it. Yeah, um, there's, there's something difficult about importing big boxes of fluff. <laughs> yeah, they take up a lot of space um, and they don't weigh very much, which would be nice, but they do take up a lot of space. But uh, we've done it before, and if you guys would like that, we would consider doing that again. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, yes, Marsha asked in um, a Facebook post how Maggie and Jill fell in love with woolly wools. Oh, I would love to hear this. Um, why don't you go first? Um, You've been here longer. <laughs> um, I have been here longer. Um, the So my love of woolly wools started... Um, I, I always love knitting with wools, um, I, but I, I definitely started with more um, probably cotton and acrylic and then moved to superwash. And then it was when I started spinning, um, I did spin a tiny bit of superwash. I really didn't love it. Um, in the spinning of it, I could really sort of feel yeah, the difference. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, on top of like when I first started spinning, just realizing how many breeds out there there were, um, in addition to like the different ways that you can prep the fiber. So I just fell down a, a woolly wormhole um, <laughs> and really just loved it. And then that translated into me now having a bunch of non superwash and just really an appreciation for non superwash wools. Yeah. Um, and kind of just wanting to try them all and um, sort of like you would sample 
chocolates <laughs> or, or something or else. Like it's just, I just really enjoyed the process of working with non-superwash wools. I think spinners do get it because you're, you know, you've got that wool going through your hands when you're spinning and that there are so many different breeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was it. Um, for me, I'm a, I'm a woolly thistle convert. <laughs> um, I had always used superwash wools. Uh -huh. Um, I never really knit much with cotton because my hands didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I used all of the all the superwash things. And about a year ago, I found out about the woolly thistle. How did you and, find out about us? Do you remember? Um, two of my friends from Switzerland. Oh, that's right. Yeah, my of friends course. from Switzerland. Yeah. They yeah they introduced me to you, and yeah, and I I got some got some yarn and I tried it out and I went. Oh my gosh, I've been missing this all of my life and oh, I didn't even know it. That's great. And I know I've told the story before, but I would see, I, you know, I would watch the two of you on the shop cast sniffing this wool and I was just like, okay, that's nice, but it doesn't, you know, what, <laughs> until I, and you know, I, I had been working here for a while and then I came to work in person last year at Christmas time. Yeah. And I walked back in the warehouse. I'm like, all right, give me one of these skeins. Let me smell it. You were not wrong. You were not wrong. <laughs> it smells lovely. The heart rate slows down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. So I yeah, so that. I came to the Woolly Thistle, or I came to Woolly Wolves from the Woolly Thistle. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah, hooray. So, <laughs> I, it doesn't matter how we get here, just so long as we get here, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I too was a super wash fiend. I knitted with a lot of that, and but I knew that my fingers were sort of, feels the same, it feels the same, and then it kind of stretched out or, you know, pulled in a way I didn't like, and I don't know, I think, uh, I think these woolier wools just, they're, they're magical, mm -hmm. and I think once you appreciate them, it's really hard to not want, want to keep going and finding out more and more, and the stories as well, and just supporting small business is really amazing. Mm -hmm. We do that directly when we shop, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, let's see. Why is that there? We had a question too. Nancy asked, um, ladies, can you speak to the differences, if any, between Wool Dreamers, Cotton Wool Sauna, and Retro Zaria's Cotton Wool um, Rosa Pomar Mungo? I knit mittens with Mungo and sadly didn't enjoy the feel of this blend. The mittens are lovely. I just don't enjoy the feel. I have knit with Rowan Wool Cotton Blend before and enjoyed the hand best. Sauna looks a little bit less stiff and I just wondered if one of you has worked with both and can give a comparison. Oh, um, you have? Sweater? So, so yeah, over I over put the sweater over. over there and we have a vest in Sauna. Yay. And then we also have samples of the balls so that we can oh, sort, sort of show. Very so nice. these are really different yarns. Um, so we have a sample here of the Super Simple Summer Sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Um, like and that. this is knit entirely in Retro Zaria Pomar Mungo. It's gorgeous. Um, so it is gorgeous. Both the yarns are lovely. They're just very different. So um, Mungo is a worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. It's made with recycled cotton um, and then it's over dyed. Um, or maybe it's dyed in the wool. Uh, or dyed in the cotton. Not dyed wool. in the wool. <laughs> um, um, so it's 100% cotton. It's worsted weight. Sauna is a 50-50. 50% wool, 50% Andalusian cotton. Um, so right from Spain. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a fingering weight yarn. It's a heavy fingering weight yarn. So it just feels really different. Yeah. This it, fabric is also crocheted. Um, yeah. Ruth crocheted this vest for us. But I think it gives you... Um, it's just a different weight yarn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's woolen spun instead of being worsted spun. Um, it's Kelsey just talked about this in her last shop cast segment that sauna is it because of that 50% wool. It does have some of the qualities of wool. Um, so if you're looking to wear it in, if you're looking for a yarn that you can wear in hot climates, this m might not be your yarn because of that wool. It depends how hot. Oh, and how comfortable you are. Although it's a lighter weight wool and this is heavier. So wearing something made out of worsted. Yeah, weight? I mean, so I think that's it for me. Like this is still going to be uh, a transitional, seasonally transitional sweater. Um, because it's worsted weight cotton. That's, I'm going to be warm in that. Yeah. Um, so I would probably keep this for spring and or fall. Which is probably the same as any sauna garment that I'm going to make. It's probably going to be those transitional months or cool evenings 
um, which we do get here in New England. I will say, I will say, <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean that. I will say that I think the knitting experience between 100% uh, cotton and a wool cotton blend, night and day, if uh, you know knitting with 100% cotton, there's no stretch, so it can be quite tiring on your hands. I find knitting with cotton less pleasurable. I can crochet with cotton and not not worry about it, but it, just having that wool in with the cotton makes it much for me nicer to knit with because you've got a little bit of stretch. Yeah, I I've, I've swatched with Santa and I think I've knit a little bit with Mongo too, and it is like the Mongo knits like cotton. It's so. cotton. Yeah. Um, it definitely has a more crisp hand. But I love um, the way the colors. Yeah, I mean, and the finished results are really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I think I could get a lot of wear out of this type of sweater. Exactly. You could be a, you know, a process knitter or, um, what's the, what's the Project one? knitter. Project knitter. Yep. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, be a project knitter to get that cotton piece done that you will wear in, you know, forever. <laughs> right. And that's one of those, like, I would probably, this wouldn't be the only project I had going if my hands needed a break. Yeah. It would be something that I yeah. worked a little bit on. Oh. Um, and then. Oh. Caitlin just told us Mungo is actually 50-50 wool cotton, too. Oh. Huh. It has oh. more cotton feeling well, than sauna. Yeah. I mean, it definitely feels more. And more plies. It so definitely feels perhaps more cottony. All right. Well, we stand corrected. Yes. Thank you for the correction. <clears throat> She's really screaming at the um, And Nancy the says, I made the Rosa shawl with Mongo, and I was not happy with the feel, which I found rough. I enjoy the shawl, and it has softened up, but would not choose to use the yarn again. Right. So so it definitely does feel more crisp. Yeah. Um, so much so we thought it was. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. Yeah. Um, so I hope that helps, especially now that we've cleared up that they're both 50-50. I think part of it, too, is the yarn weight, though. Like the, the heavier the, weight, yeah. The worsted weight. And also that sauna is woolen spun, so there's just air incorporated in there, yeah. whereas it Mongo feels is softer. just a denser yarn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious to try Mongo at a really loose gauge, mm -hmm. and I've not played mm -hmm. with that yet. Do we have any more questions? Um, we, we do have yeah. some more questions. Um, Eileen asked, I love the vanilla sweater pattern and have knit two and I'm about to knit my third. I had almost given up on sweaters because I wasn't happy with the look, weight, or feel. This sweater delightly, delightfully works for me yeah. and was like my winter uniform top last year. <laughs> um, and somebody says, I have allergy issues with knitting and some non-superwashed wools, but have had no problem with Rama Finnelgarn. I Good. wonder why. I don't know why. I am not sure at all. Yeah, but I'm glad. Have you thought about giving additional hacks or options for this sweater? How difficult would it be to make it a V-neck? Mm. And how about some simple color work? Do you have some pics of your favorite vanilla sweaters you have seen out in the world? Oh, wow. Um, so we could, we could change it up and have a V-neck. That wouldn't be too hard to do. And I have thought about a cardigan version. It's just I haven't done these things yet. Down there. Sorry. Okay. I'm just folding. Um, yeah. I'm pro. I'm pro cardigan. Pro cardigan. I ha I haven't knit a vanilla sweater because I'm not a pullover yeah. kind of girl. Yeah. So yeah. A cardigan. Would you want to knit it back and forth or would you want to stick it? Um, I don't know. I have a preference. I don't mind stocking it flat. Yeah. But yeah, I would not be opposed to doing you know a two in one. You learn yeah. a stick and you yeah. get a cardigan. So. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, I would have to think about what, yeah, so I'd have to think about it because part of the charm of the vanilla sweater is that it's knitted at a looser gauge. So if you have a cardigan that's already raglan sleeve, I, maybe it would be a V-neck cardigan so that it doesn't just sort of fall over. You know what I mean? Like the red yeah. neck might just fall over, but if we did a V, yeah, I'd have to think about it. Um, I don't think it'd be hard to do it, but you know, I do everything actually, so it takes time. <laughs> yeah. I can't just do it all in my head and be like, that'll work. Um, I gotta, I gotta work my way through it. Um, but there's, there's some wonderful, wonderful uh, vanilla sweaters out there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorites that I've seen at a couple of shows, um, and I'm forgetting her name right now, but she has embroidered flowers oh, on yeah. the front of hers. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely gorgeous. I would love to talk to her some more about that um and uh i've seen stripes 
we've seen strides. So yeah, um, it's great. And I think people are feeling confident to mash them up a little bit themselves, make them longer, lengthen sleeves, that sort of thing, which is great. Um, I saw a vanilla sweater last year during the sweater cowl that was this lovely kind of a pale lilac color. And she, um, I can't remember if it was needle felted or embroidered a sheep on the like Aww. on the bottom of the corner of it. Oh, that's yeah. adorable. Ador yeah, it was adorable. I think knitting it in different yarns too. There's a few Jameson and Smith two ply ones out there that are really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think one would be great in tuku wool fingering as well. Maybe somebody's done that. I think one would look great in darny. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A nice tweedy one. Yeah, I would, I would be all about a darny sweater. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Make Renee my job. says my steak for her. Huh? Renee says steak. Oh, uh, you would want a steak. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So. Um, I can see one quick question. Bernadette. Bernadette wants to know when will the book for toys be in? Um, you are talking about Moosh and Friends, yeah. I'm assuming. Um, it is on order right now. We were waiting for Lina to get their stock. They would be printing it. Yeah. A huge First demand. printing sold out, which yeah. is fantastic. So we'll have it as soon as they have it, and we'll we'll be shouting about it, I'm quite sure. Yeah. So, do we have pre-orders open? Potentially, no. no we have we opened pre-orders? Maybe we should. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll not do this live and in the moment. Um, yeah. But there's always that. <laughs> Keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great book. Mm -hmm. We Might have placed our order, so it's just a matter of waiting for the the order to come in. Yeah. So okay. Um, oh, Susan has asked. I want to ask if there will be more crochet segments on the podcast. I love the one about socks this month. Uh, it's been a fabulous birthday month, and I'm so happy that TWT is growing, 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 growing. <laughs> we love all you do to bring beautiful yarns and tool, tools for our crafting. Thank you. Thank so. you very much. Yeah, it's been a great birthday month, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. With opening the shop and everything, it's been really lovely to spend time with actual people and, and you know, flesh and blood. It's been good. It's been really nice. Yeah. But yeah. back to the question at hand. What's will the there question? be more? Will there be more crochet segments on the podcast? Oh, I'm sure. If if Ruth is going to uh, play, then yeah. yeah, yeah, Ruth is planning on regularly contributing as long as we welcome her, and we will keep on welcoming her as yeah. long as she will keep Ruth recording. Is great. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, yeah. um, yes, if uh, you know, we we try to hear you, and if you want more of something, we do our best. So, mm -hmm. um, if more crochet is something that you'd like, we definitely. Uh, be into trying to do more of that for you. I think it's great that Ruth is using uh, so many woolly thistle yarns yeah. in her crochet. That, that feels I new. Saw, I saw her socks that were mm -hmm. a combination of knit yeah. and crochet, like the crochet, yeah. or the knit <laughs> foot with the little crocheted yeah. granny squares on the top. I mean, that's and, amazing. Isn't yeah, it was that? really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Are there any other questions on the pre order? Is nice. <laughs> checking okay it's 12 o'clock just checking okay uh, any more uh, all right Catherine says i'm about to begin my kalavala sweater from book one distra distracted by too many baby knits Aww. book two is beautiful can i consult regarding yarn choices for two of the sweaters when i order the new book absolutely yes yes yeah um you can chat bubble if it's uh, if it's up in live mm -hmm. and jill is there yep. you can email you can call us mm -hmm. Happy to help. Yeah. So um, some of those things um, get forwarded on to Kelsey, who is very much our yarn expert. Um, so You'll know not, Kelsey from the shop cast. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's not something that I can you know, easily answer, that does get sent on to her because she's she's quick on it and yeah, and is able to do a lot without even researching. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Happy to help. Yep. So um, I think anytime you have a project in mind but aren't quite sure to use, Send us an email or yeah. message us, um, and either Jill or Kelsey will get back to you mm -hmm. um, and help you um, in setting up for your project. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, here are just some random questions people have. Um, what's your favorite pattern for beginners? Oh, the vanilla sweater. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a big project. Mm -hmm. um, but as a first garment, I would say the vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to knit, color work, I would say something like the Bel um, the Belvoni or the uh, Flowers of Portrose beanie. That's mm -hmm. a good one. Mm -hmm. How about you guys? I, I always have a question of what level of beginner? Like, are we talking beginner, beginner? Are we talking beginner color work? Mm -hmm. or, like, are you just learning your stitches? Because then that's a different recommendation mm -hmm. than um, are you ready to knit a sweater yet? Yeah. Um, yeah. So... 
uh, I like, there's a lot of free tin can knits patterns tin can that are or... really good, especially if you're looking to start something with a worsted weight or a DK weight yarn. Mm -hmm. um, their patterns are fabulous. They go from baby size all the way up through mm -hmm. um, any adult size. Mm -hmm. So no matter what size you're looking for. Um, I, when I was a beginner, which I had babies at the time, so I knit lots of small things. So my first sweater was actually like a baby sweater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you learn all the steps yeah. so that then when you're ready to embark on a full-size sweater, you've already done the raglan increases and yeah. you've already separated for sleeves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yep. I was going to say, uh, <clears throat> Tin Can Knits, um, the barley hat. Yeah. Yep. It, you know, it gets you all of the things. It gets you knitting in the round. It gets mm -hmm. you casting on. It gets you binding off. It gets you knitting and purling and doing simple decreases. And it's a hat, so it gets done pretty quickly. Yeah. And no matter cheap, what huh? size you make, it's going to fit somebody. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't fit you, it'll fit someone. Yeah. 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 So. Those, those are good recs. Yeah. Ten can knits for the win. I avoid scarves. Oh. At all costs. I know because people yeah. used to start off to be like, yeah. oh, I'll make a scarf. But a scarf is this never-ending black hole of knitting. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. you're done, all you've learned is you know, the net stitch. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. I <laughs> so. think starting with hats. I like starting with hats. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you can learn how to magic loop doing that mm -hmm. or what have you. Yep. DPNs. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of questions here, and they're sort of related, even though they're from different people. Um, one is, can you explain again the difference between woolen spun and worsted spun? Do you want to give this a go? Okay. <laughs> Woolen spun is when um, the prep of the fiber going into the spinning is all jumbled up. So there, it's just all jumbled up. It traps a lot of air. Um, and so when you knit with that yarn, it feels lighter. It's, it's warmer because it traps all that air and it just feels lighter. Worsted spun is when the prep is all aligned and everything's organized and then spun together so it might feel silkier and smoother because you've got uh, everything organized but there's a lot more wool in there so it's more dense and it can feel heavier and it but it can have beautiful drape and all of that so different preps for different uses you know sweaters are really great in wool and spun they're great in worsted spun too but maybe i'd do a cardigan or a flowy shawl or something like that but that said you can do beautiful woolen spun uh shawls you know that are haps and big and traditional and they, they're going to keep you warm so um i think they make the yarn feel different if you had the same wool prep two different ways they're going to feel different and they're going to have different weight at the end of the day yep uh related question natasha says does woolen spun knit differently than superwash when knitting socks so there's a couple different things that yeah. to unpack out of there. Um, typically, I don't use woolen spun yarns for socks. Right. Um, I have seen some people do it with good results. I've just not experimented with it yet. I personally um, would not do that because I will blow through those heels in a day or two. <laughs> I'm sure the fiber content would have an impact and the number of plies but yeah. i'm not i i'm not sure i'd have to investigate if there even is woolen spun soft yarn out there you know intended for socks i'm not sure so worsted yeah. spun is good for socks because all those fibers are organized um they might have three or four plies actual plies and a higher twist so then you're getting into other things than just the preparation of the wool but um I wouldn't recommend woolen spun for socks off the top of my head. I can't think why you would. I mean, I like bed socks. Yeah, or something I think like depending that. on if you're if you want hardy socks that you can wear in your boots and in your shoes without having to worry too much about a hole immediately springing up, <laughs> um, that would be my concern with a woolen spun yeah, me too. yarn that wasn't designed for socks. And I can't think of any woolen spun yarns that are Same. specifically saying that they're sock yarns. Right. Um, Correct whereas, us if we're wrong. I'd yeah, love to know. whereas um, a superwash, like how will Rambler differ from superwash? Great. Um, <laughs> so a Rambler is a worsted spun. So, and most superwash sock yarns, they're the same type of spinning technique that's used. So, but a superwash yarn is going to have, in order to get that washability in the washing machine, um, it goes through a process of removing some of the scales. So we'll um, naturally. that wool naturally has scales, um, that's why it will felt. So when you heat up the wool yarn, the scales open up, and then they're more likely to 
felt with agitation. Um, whereas superwash, those scales have been removed. So the scales, the things still open up, but they don't stick together. The thing that allows them to stick has been removed, um, either chemically or physically. I don't know exactly how they do it, but um, superwash, it also makes them feel really smooth. So a superwash yarn will feel incredibly smooth. Rambler um, is made with Dorset, um, Dorset, Corydale, and Romney. Romney, thank you. Um, so it's a medium weight wool, which is, um, you could have a superwash dorset, I guess. Uh, any wool could be superwash, but ours is a non-superwash. Um, it's a little bit hardier, toothier. Um, you cannot wash this in the washing machine. Um, it would felt. Mm -hmm. um, or shrink or something. Dorsets will naturally resist felting, but don't, te I wouldn't test it. Like no. it's still, you're going to want to hand wash these. Um, and they're just sturdier. So it's just going to feel, just feels different. It's, it's not going to be quite as smooth as I would expect a super wash yarn to feel pretty smooth. And I think for the most part, when, when you're talking about super wash sock yarn, it's often a merino nylon blend. So mm -hmm. merino is a very soft wool, right? We love the feel of it. It's very soft. And then on top of that, it's been smoothed out uh, in the super wash process. So now you've got this very smooth, soft yarn that you have to put nylon in to make it durable as a sock yarn. Uh, with our yarn, it's 100% wool. There is no nylon in it because we haven't descaled it. It's made with uh, yarn that is hardy. So it doesn't feel super soft. It doesn't feel super smooth, but it feels like wool. And um, I know personally, I'm pretty hard on my feet and on socks and I'm still trying to bust through a pair. I, yeah. I, is, I've set a goal to myself to see how many wears. And has your, um, did yours felt at all? Have you noticed any felting? No, in the... no, not yeah. yet. And I think I've got one pair that I've worn 20 times so far and not even a hint of anything going on. Great. Um, um, I asked because Natasha has asked, um, should I adjust how I measure my foot before blocking when going between the two, when going between a super wash and a non super wash. And I know there was a video from Wooly Mammoth, Emma mm -hmm. put out there that her hearth socks, which are non super wash, um, I don't remember the fiber content in her yarn, but she says hers do actually felt a little bit. So she knits her sock a little bit longer. With Rambler, I don't think you need to do that. Right. Um, my Rambler socks have not noticed any felting. The fit has been perfect, and I just knit it the same length that I knit. Me too, I haven't made any adjustments. Socks. Um, when we say washing your socks by hand though, what for me that means is I get the water quite warm. I put a little bit of eucalyptus in or even dish soap. I don't froth it. I just let it fall to the bottom. And then you put your socks in and you get them all wet and you walk away for half an hour. And when you come back, you lift them out carefully and you squeeze the water out. You don't wring, never wring, because that'll stretch but you just squeeze, 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 wrap them up in a towel, jump on the towel on the floor. <laughs> That's always fun. And then uh, roll them out and leave them out to dry. That's it. It's yeah. really easy to look after your socks. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, Bernadette says, do you recommend Rambler yarn for a vanilla sweater? Uh, yeah, I think that would be quite nice. I think that it is a medium staple length of uh, wool in there. So I think it would have some drape in it as a sweater. I've seen some sweaters knitted up. In fact, uh, Caitlin did a beautiful color work sweater for her son, which is lovely. Um, yeah, I think it could work. I would, I haven't tried it yet. I just haven't had the, ugh, can't get to it. But um, I would look at the gauge and see what sort of gauge you're getting and see if it matches. I think would get. for me, that's the thing is I would want to make sure you would want to make sure that you like the fabric that exactly. you're getting at that gauge before you embark upon a sweater. I mean, the vanilla sweater is just a raglan sweater. There's nothing yeah. particular about it. That's why it's vanilla. That's why it got its name, if you didn't know. Um, and so I knitted the vanilla sweater with a woolen spun yarn, which is Rama Fennel Garn. Rambler is a worsted spun yarn uh, with different wool in the content, also a three ply. So you definitely can use it for garments. I'm not saying anything to the contrary, but it, it'll behave differently and probably look a little bit different uh, if you were to knit a vanilla in it. But yeah, so like like you said, yeah. knit a swatch, see if you wash it. Well, yeah, for the love of all things good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I think <laughs> definitely, I would definitely, sw like I was thinking specifically for a vanilla sweater, I would swatch at that gauge and make sure you like the fabric in that pattern. Right. If you don't like the gauge, you can either add mohair, you can yeah. always fluff it. Oof. Um, I think that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, I know we had one Thistler who knit a small uh -huh. sweater um, in a Rambler, samal. a Samal, uh, oh, the wow. Hokey Locatelli pattern, okay. and, and I bet that looked amazing. The photos of it look amazing. You can see it on um, Ravelry. Yeah. Let's see if we can find it and put a little. Oh, that's in here great! Later. I missed that. Um, but so I know some sweaters have been knit. Yeah. Um, well, and then we've got the um, beautiful uh, the one recursion. by Kim, the recursion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With color work in there, uh, it looks fabulous. Yeah. Back back to the swatch thing, you know. I'm I'm I am, I, <laughs> I'm preaching swatch. A swatch this big is not a swatch. That's a sample. <laughs> a swatch this big. We'll tell you something. Well, yeah, um, I took a class on on it was a whole class on knitting swatches. Fabulous. And um, Josh Bennett taught it years ago, uh -huh. and um, he he even talks about making like a twelve inch swatch. Yeah. Because he's like, you take this little piece and you like lay it on your arm. It doesn't tell you anything, but you take this nice big piece and you can you know see how it actually drapes on you your can, body. And, and also, you can slip it under your bra strap and wear it next to skin if you're testing for that. Wear yeah. it all day and see if you even feel it after a little. Yeah. But yeah, you can see. Yes, bigger is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I will it, oftentimes start with a sleeve and call that my swatch too. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know and. You don't have to worry about about ruining that yarn because if you know if you need it later yeah. to finish up, you can, you can un unravel it yeah. and reuse it. Yeah. Yeah. Good yarn. Good yarn is ravelable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Renee is pointing out that Margaret would like to know about the samples behind us. Ah, uh -huh. that's good. So, well, we just got this brand new sample, Mar uh, Margaret, Maggie. <laughs> Do you want to tell us yeah, about this? Sure, you just if you want to in. take it down. So um, all of the, the designs on that mannequin were designed by Carolyn Colebrook. Friend of the show. Yes. Friend so of the shop. The teal shawl is knit with Scottish Yarn Festival. And it's gorgeous. Um, and the sweater is knit with Tuka Wool Fingering. Beautiful. Um, we can link her, her designs in the um, in the comments. Yep. yep. Um, um, but this one here, let's give this oh, one to Maggie. A tag. So this yep. one just arrived in the mail. Carolyn was kind enough to send us another sample. She's great. Um, this is the Jenny Lake shawl, and it is knit with Mountain Meadow Cody. It oh is so my springy. Gosh, and the definition, like, though. The yeah. stretch. Like it's, I, I feel like if the yarn could make a sound, it would go Like, <laughs> look at the, look at the lace and how that just yeah. pops open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just amazing. And the relief that you get on the different, look yeah. at that knit stitch compared yeah. to the pearl. So this is the Cody that we just uh, started stocking and yeah. she's made a whole shawl in it. Yeah. Beautiful. I will say I'm a big fan of a good stretch of garter and just mm -hmm. look how that just pops in the garter yeah. stitch. Yeah, like, beautiful. Just really, really wonderful. She's mm -hmm. she's doing great things with her she's designs. Doing, oh, Do you yeah. want to show this one too? Yeah, okay, so, so this one is the um, Garden in the Glen shawl. Gorgeous. And yeah. And it has thistles. Oh, so yeah, let's see if we can find it. <laughs> if this goes missing. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Although, although, there's although there's I need it. Happen. There it is. <laughs> well, maybe you have to knit one. Yeah. Maybe I need to knit one. Do we need another uh -huh. shawl cow? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah. I do. I a also, sweater in this would be so nice. Can I, can I just interrupt this for a minute? I notice my sister's here, so if I don't say hi. Hi, Marie! Hi! hi. hi. <laughs> she popped in. <laughs> um, yeah, so th that's that. And then um, you'll hear all about this on Friday's Shopcast. Um, Corrine's been talking about it a little bit already, but yeah, you can see the finish. I finished a thing! Yay! Yay! This is uh, the... Uh, Fest of Fortros or Fortros Flowers Fest. I haven't, don't know yet. It's so Monday. It's something about, <laughs> yes, something about Flowers of Fortros Fest. Maybe that's what it is. But yeah, this is a new design. It's using the motif that we have in the Fortros beanie and uh, mittens that we did not long ago. Um, this actually fits my daughter, uh, not me, but I'm planning to cast on my next one and start working out the details for sizing it up. But I love this. This was so potato chippy. It's in Jameson and Smith two ply. Uh, again, it's wool and spun, and all the colors, all that color work, just wants to, you know, knit together, fills any gaps, and very potato chippy. We've got a corrugated rib at the bottom, and then uh, each of these is maybe nine rows, so you can sit down and finish one pretty quickly, and then you do bloop, all the way up. We stick for the armholes and the neck as well. Uh, and I did record me doing that and talked about that a little bit. 
Um, yeah, I think this is very pretty if I do say so. Mm -hmm. I love it so much because of the colors and Maggie actually put these colors together for mm -hmm. one of our kits for the mittens and, and hat. And when I saw that, I'm like, that is going home with me. It's very so. sunrisey looking. Sunrisey, yeah, sunset, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very potato chippy. Very happy knitting on it. And I, I did it. Well, I don't think I finished in time for the end of the, the cowl, but I was knitting on that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And socks. I love mm -hmm. my socks. Nice. All right. Bernadette finished her flowers and Fort Rose hat and is still working on the mittens. Terrific. It might nice. be a little warm for a shawl. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is, is beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah, so that's in the Mountain so. Meadow Cody, which is brand new. Highly recommend mm -hmm. some yes. texture and lace knitting in this. It looks yeah. good. Cables would pop and so great. Yeah. Yep, that just it. arrived today. So thank you, Carolyn. Yes. Wow. Looks like we have 16 colors of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, nice choice. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. right. Any other questions before we run? I've got another. Would you photo. recommend frangipani mm -hmm. for socks? I w honestly, I would give it a go. It's a five ply wool. Um, it High is, twist. It is built for strength. Yeah. Um, I think there are some patterns out there. I feel like I've seen those before. My um, concern with it would probably come from the stretch enough to get over your heel. Yeah, you would definitely want to sort of like swatch it or or at least be able to try them on so that be you're getting a fit that you yeah. like. Yeah, because it's such a tight twist and five ply, there might not be as much stretch in it as, as other yarns. Yeah. But I think that would be a great test. Yeah. And if, if it works for you, then that would be amazing. Everyone I do know socks. I've seen some sock patterns out there Have that you? use spring. All right. Me, so I would see what they recommend. Um, I can look when we're done on the live and see which one I'm thinking of in particular, but yeah, um, yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to 100% wool sock yarns at all, um, as I you can not. tell from the Rambler, <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I think we often think negatively about 100% wool sock yarns, but I think that's no, mostly I... with like merino. Yeah. Right, um, exactly. So... I would want to see that extra strength, which is why yeah. I think Moosum Falls that's a super wash. It's merino, but it's got four plies. Um, I've been really and pleased with that And it's got nylon in it. Nope. Oh, that's 100%. It is 100% super wash merino. But it's, it's got a four, four ply. ply tight twist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I haven't I haven't knit with that to know. I have, and they're holding up really well. Good. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we answered all the questions we had ahead of time. All right. And I hope we've answered all the questions in the in the chat all right so well thank you for yeah. being here it's lovely to chit chat with you um thank you for helping us celebrate our birthday and uh you know thank you for being woolly thistlers uh, we are nothing without you so keep doing what you're doing keep in touch and uh enjoy your week i hope it's a great week for everybody thank right, you bye. Bye. bye bye oh and if you go out Take your knitting. knitting. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>